Hello, in this video we're going to look at the sum of per perpendicular projection matrices. And actually a reference is a book titled Plain Answers to Complex Questions by Ronald Christensen. And these two theorems are, are taken from that book. And the proofs are his, except for I fill in a lot of the detail that is glossed over. So in theorem 1, let M1 and M2 be perpendicular projection matrices onto N space. M1 plus N2 is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of the augmented matrix M1, M2. If and only if the column spaces of M1 and the column space of M2 are orthogonal. And like I said, this will be this theorem will be needed in design of experiments, especially when we talk about randomized block designs or one way fixed repeated measures, one way fixed effects. And so the proof, since it's if and only if, we go both ways. So let's go this way, which means we assume this and then we'll prove this. So let's assume that the column spaces are orthogonal. Then that means M1 equal M2, you know, or M1 times M2 equals M2 times M1 is zero. Right? They're orthogonal to each other. So let's take the transpose of M1 plus M2. That means you just take it into each. And since these are perpendicular projection matrices, they are symmetric. So we get it back. So now notice that it's symmetric. So M1 plus M2 is symmetric. So let's look at it times itself. So then we write it, you know, M1 plus M2 times M1 plus M2. And then you do the multiplication out. You FOIL it, like my daughter would call it. So you get M1 squared, M2 squared, M1 times M2, M2 times M1. Now, since these spaces are orthogonal, these are zero. And these are perpendicular projection matrices, so they're idempotent, so we just get it back. Right? So that says M M1 plus M2 is symmetric and it's idempotent. So well, okay, so thus it's symmetric and idempotent, which means that M1 plus M2 is a perpendicular projection matrix onto its own column space of M1 plus M2. And I'm going to point you to a video that I call Perpendicular Projection Matrices. So next we need to show that this the column space of M1 plus M2 is equal to the column space that, of the augmented matrix M1 plus M2. So let's let V be in this column space of M1 plus M2. That means we can write V as a linear combination of the columns. So for some vector B in N space, that M1 plus M2 times B is V, because V lives in this column space. And so that's what this means. So V is equal to this. So if we take V times that, or B times M2 and B times M1, we get this. But then you can kind of, you know, back you know, take it out, and it's this. So this augmented matrix of M1 and M2 times this vector that has B, you know, on top of itself, right? Those are equal. But this says, this is in the call, this says it's in the column space of the augmented matrix M1 plus M2. So thus, the column space of M1 plus M2 is a subspace or subset of the column space of the augmented matrix M1, M2. So now let's assume that V is in the column space of M1, the augmented matrix M1, M2. So that means V can be written as a linear combination of the columns, like this, where B is in the 2N space, right? Because this is N by N and this is N by N. So the columns are 2N. So this vector needs to be 2N by 1. And that's what, that's what I mean by this. So let's break or partition B 
into B1 and B2, where this is, so B1 is an n by 1 vector and B2 is an n by 1 vector. So they're both in n space. Then V can be written like this. Right? So if this B is B1 and B2, and then when you take this multiplication, you get this. So now let's look at taking M1 plus M2 times V. And V is this vector here. So now let's, let's replace what we know about V. Put it here. And now, and now we foil this in a sense. So that times this is this. This times that is that. And then this times that and that times that. And we get this. But remember, these are orthogonal, so that's zero, and this is zero. And these are idempotent, so we just get it back. <clears throat> but wait, this is V. So that tells us that V is in the column space of M plus 1. Right? We get it back. So thus, the column, the column space of the augmented matrix M1 plus M2 is a subset of the column space of M1 plus M2. And therefore, these two column spaces equal. Which means that M1 plus M2 is a perpendicular projection matrix onto this augmented column space. Now let's go the other way. Let's assume that M1 plus M2 is a perpendicular projection matrix onto this augmented column space. Right? So since it's a perpendicular projection matrix, it equals, you know, if it's idempotent. That's what this property says. And then when we multiply this out, we get M1 squared, M2 squared, and then the, the cross products. But here, since they're idempotent, that's just M1 and this is M2. And then these come down. But wait, for this it's it, it's idempotent, so these equal. So th um, this has to equal this. But the only way that this can happen is if this piece is zero. So this implies, and I use a star because we're going to re re refer back to this equation, that M1 times M2 plus M2 times M1 is zero. So this piece has to be zero. Now let's left multiply this equation by M1. So M1 times this, M1 times this, and then we get, you know, zero. Um, M1 squared, it's idempotent, so we just get M1 back, and then we get this, and it equals zero, right? Now this implies, so if we subtract this piece over, we get this equation, but notice this is symmetric. If we take the transpose of this and then distribute it and flip it and all these are symmetric, so this is symmetric. So that implies M1 times M2 is symmetric. Right? So M1, M2 is equal to its transpose. But then when we distribute this, you know, we have to flip these around and transpose them, but those are symmetric. So M1, M2 is equal to M2, M1. So if we re-look at star up here, we get this. So M1, M2, but these two are equal. So it's like two times M1, M2 is equal to zero. But since both M1 and M2 are perpendicular projection makes onto the orthogonal complement, you know, they're orthogonal complement to each other, the column space is orthogonal, I should say, this is zero. And we're finished. So theorem two, if M1 and M2 are symmetric, then the column space M1 and the column space M2 are, th are orthogonal, and M1 and M2 is a perpendicular projection matrices, then M1 and M2 are per per perpendicular projection matrices.
So if all this holds here, then these are perpendicular projection matrices. So we must show that M1 and M2 are idempotent. So if M, M, M1 plus M2 is a perpendicular projection matrix, so it's idempotent. So these, this equals, and then you foil it out and you get this. But M1 and M2 are symmetric, and their column spaces are orthogonal. So that says each of these are zero, so then these are zero. So that says we get, so if we look at this right here, and since these are zero, we get this. Now, if we take the mu2 to subtract to the other side, and then subtract the m1 to the other side of this and this, we get this equation here. Now, the column space, so, so those equal, so the, these two matrices, so the column spaces are the same, right? They're equal, so the column space of this equals the column space of that. Now note that the column space of M2 minus M2 squared is equal to this. You know, you can just left factor out an M2. So, but this, note, is, is, is a subset of the column space of M, right? It's a linear combination of M. So it has to be a, a subset of the column space of M. And M1, M2, if we right factor out an M1, we get this. And this is a subset of the column space of M1, right? So this is a linear combination of columns of M1. So it has to be a subset of column space of, of M1. So this implies that this column space is perpendicular to this. And why is that? Because one of our assumptions is that the column space of M1 and the column space of M2 were orthogonal. So any vector in here is orthogonal to any vector in here. And we just showed that this vector is in M2 and this matrix and, th and these vectors or these columns or this matrix is in M1 so that means the the column spaces have to be orthogonal because that's by assumption well the only vector space orthogonal to itself is the zero vector so that says M2 minus M2 squared equal which is equal to M1 squared minus M1 has to be zero it's the only way that that property can hold. And if these are equal, so this, so this equals zero. So if we sub, if we add m1 to over to the other side, that says m1's idempotent. And then we can use the same thing here that says m2 is idempotent. And so we're done. So we've we've shown that they're symmetric and idempotent. So they have to be perpendicular projection matrices. All right, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.